Well, we've talked with a few drivers. We're going to switch and talk to a conditioner, and I'm sure many recognize the talent and the face of Virgil Morgan Jr. Virgil, here you are today at the Delaware Race Card, and there's a lot of races, but you have a lot in them. How many are you racing today? Eight today. Eight today. That's a lot to keep track of, which is why it was hard to catch up with you. Right now, you're about to send Girls So Happy posted in this course. Can you give me a quick word about her? Um, she's a nice filly. She's a three-year-old, uh, little green. She's won four of nine. Uh, the post wasn't the kindest to us here. Uh, the seven hole, that's a big obstacle to overcome uh, at Delaware or any half mile track, but uh, I think she'll make a, a good uh, a good showing for herself. I want to talk a little bit about the next filly too, because she's in the Ohio Breeders' Championship, and that is Trey Crest. She's been somewhat of a disappointment uh, this year. She's, uh, she's a homebred. She's actually named after my son, and uh, she was uh, one of the better fillies in the state last year, made 86,000, and uh, we had some high hopes for this year, but she's had a lot of uh, physical problems, and um, she threw them away for the state fair there when she won that, and hopefully she can do the same today. Again, uh, the post is an obstacle. Well, those are the next two up, but I'm going to jump way ahead and talk about the second division of the Little Brown Jug, San Francisco, a horse that was really highly regarded earlier in the season and seems to have tailed off. Well, we, we, we made a game plan to hit all the early stakes, and, and it worked out. He was six for six, and by design, we shut him down in the summer uh, to try to get him ready for some of the, la the latter races. And uh, he's probably about 90% coming into the race. I, I wish he was a little sharper, obviously, um, but, you know, we, we have to do the best uh, we can today. A lot goes into the decision for many trainers, owners, uh, connections of a horse as to whether or not to enter a judge. Was there ever a doubt? Yeah, uh, I made a statement to them. If, uh, if he raced in the Pennsylvania, um, Pennsylvania Star 6 final, and uh, he paid for his way, his entry, and then we would race him. And he picked up $7,500, ironically enough. The entry fee, I believe, was $6,000, so, so we went ahead and brought him. Well, that's quite a story. How many horses are you currently conditioning, Virgil? Uh, he's 63 now, and I would say by the time they all come in in January, we're right around 80. That's a lot of horses to keep track of, and sometimes you're racing horses at different places all in one evening. What are some of the challenges on staying on top of things? Uh, just the game plan. You, you constantly have to stay on top of it day to day, and uh, uh, on Sundays it takes a long time, but you have to figure out who you're going to race where and you know who's going to drive them and who's going to ship them and uh, it's a it's a constant thing there's no time to rest when you started off you maybe had a small string of horses i'm sure there were pressures but are the pressures that much greater now um i really don't uh deal with the pressure i just uh you know do the best i can actually uh, uh i kind of like to be uh put in a a pressure uh, pressure point or pressure spotlight i guess uh, it never has affected me and, and i don't think it will well, with your success, many are taking note of how you do things, and it does seem that you have a couple of little things that you do differently. Many people have uh, noticed that often when you warm a horse up, it's kind of a light, slow warm-up. Uh, sometimes the horse is unchecked. What's your particular thought? I try to create a relaxed atmosphere for each horse, stress-free, um, uh, just comfortable. As long as they're comfortable, uh, the main focus point in warming one up is to get them hot, to get them warm, and... Uh, I think uh, it, it's an older traditional thing of you know warming up and coming the last quarter in 28 seconds. Uh, I'm, I'm, I think that there are some exceptions, but I think that's a thing of the past. And and uh, my main thing is to, to try to create a stress-free environment for the horse and and let them be happy and comfortable. Of course, racing in daylight does happen at fairs, and uh, most horses take everything in stride. But are there any situations with uh, younger horses where maybe a spot at Delaware is a little bit disconcerting? Absolutely. Uh, you know, you, you've got the atmosphere, you've got the crowd. There, there's a lot of things here that they're not exposed to all year long. Uh, you've got the flags waving around, the crowd, tickets flying around, uh, paper. Uh, they do an excellent job here, but there's still a lot of distractions for younger horses and aged horses. Is there anything you can do to try to make it minimal? Uh, I brought a few horses up here and trained them this week, and I, I don't put a whole lot of play into that. Uh, I just did that because it was their first start on the half, and uh, just wanted to get over the track. But I don't think you can really prepare prepare them too much for today because it's a unique situation. There's really no other track like Delaware, uh, and that's that's why uh, there's 50,000 people here today. 
You better believe that, Virgil. We talked about three of your performers, but there are still five others. Why don't you go through a couple in your head and tell the crowd at home anything that you might have to say about a couple of yours. And you, yeah, get that paper out there and look at that. That's how the homework is done. Even he has to keep track of things on the sheet there. Yeah, I definitely uh, keep a little cheat sheet for me for equipment-wise. And, and uh, usually before I come to the paddock, I make a few notes to make sure I tell the grooms. And uh, uh, I've got a nice two-year-old Colt in the fifth race. Uh, he should make a good showing for himself. Oaks and Forster. Um, gifted Jate. Uh, he's a talented homebred. Uh, Jate LaBelle Colt. Uh, Post is a little bit of an obstacle, but hopefully he can overcome that. San Francisco, you know, the six-hole Gallo Blue Chip got the rail. That's just a... Uh, a huge advantage uh, to Gallo Blue Chip, but not that he needs it. Um, and Tiny on the outside, uh, four hole, uh, if he can get away clean, uh, I think he'll be okay. Actually, Tiny on the outside was in the Judd preview at Scioto Downs, and I believe, uh, weren't you in the division with Gallo Blue Chip? Yes, unfortunately he was. Uh, he got uh, a little bit of traffic trouble. We were hoping to finish fifth or fourth. Uh, he, he really wasn't a win factor, you know, that would be great if it happened, but uh, realistically we were looking to, to get a check and uh, unfortunately it didn't happen. Of course, you're always um, observing other trainers and other people's horses as well as your own. And what were your uh, quick thoughts on Gallo Blue Chip when you saw him race at Toyota? Uh, awesome. Uh, considering the way he did it, he was parked and uh, to go 150 there, uh, you know, that was just an awesome performance. All right, Virgil, thanks for your words, and I know you got to get busy, so I'm going to let you go and send it back over to you and Jeff. Thanks, thanks a lot, lot Chris. You know, 